The Harry Potter franchise has been part of gaming since 2001, with a title for every novel and film in the series. However, there is still one highly anticipated Wizarding World game that has yet to be released, marking a new evolution in the series with Hogwarts Legacy. But first, let's go back to the very start, where the series began in 2001 with the release of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The gameplay did differ quite dramatically depending which platform you play on. Players could control Harry from a third person perspective and complete puzzles, attend classes, fight enemies and cast and unlock spells as they progress through the story. Some levels also allow players to fly on a broomstick and play Quidditch. The game features all of the main characters from the series including Harry, Ron, Hermione, Draco and Hagrid as well as a final boss battle against Voldemort. A staple of the first game was collecting Bertie Bot's every flavoured beans hidden throughout the castle to swap with Fred and George for wizard trading cards, which became quite the challenge with so many to find. There were also two handheld versions released including a role playing game similar to Pokemon for the Game Boy Colour and a top down puzzle adaptation for the Game Boy Advance. Despite receiving a score of 65 out of 100 on Metacritic, the first Harry Potter game was a commercial success selling 2.7 million copies in the United States alone. In 2002, Two, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets game was released in several different versions. The game followed the plot quite closely but also included additional content for players to enjoy, including the first fully explorable version of Diagon Alley. One major improvement was that players could roam around Hogwarts freely, allowing them to explore the school grounds and hidden areas. As well as the return of Bertie Bot's beans and wizard cards, there was also a lost items bulletin board in the Gryffindor common room. If you found a hidden item, you were rewarded with an exclusive wizard card. The game received generally positive reviews, with the PC version receiving a score of 77, which was 12 points higher than the first game. It became one of the most successful Harry Potter games in the series, selling over 9 million copies. In 2003, Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup was released. Unlike previous games, this one focused on Quidditch matches, making it more of a sports game. Players could choose to play as one of the four Hogwarts house teams and compete in the Quidditch Cup against the other houses. The game did include recognisable names for players based on characters from the Wizarding World, which was a really nice touch. If you were successful in the previous tournament, you could go on to compete against international teams in the Quidditch World Cup. This included countries like England, Japan, the USA, France, Germany, Australia and Spain. Of course, Bulgaria was also available, but required unlocking through progression. The cups were awarded based on total points scored across all the matches, rather than just wins. A version of the game was also released for the Game Boy Advance, offering a more basic experience on the go. Just one year later in 2004, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was released. The game featured new spells and creatures to fight, as well as the addition of new characters such as Sirius Black. Players could explore, complete side quests, uncover secrets and also had the option to play as Ron and Hermione in addition to Harry. The PC and console versions included exclusive spells for each of the free playable characters. Players could switch depending on the level they needed to complete. There was even a mini game where you could ride Buckbeak around the Hogwarts grounds. The game received generally negative reviews with critics stating that it was not as good as the Chamber of Secrets game and was only enjoyable for hardcore Harry Potter fans. It received a score of 67 which is 10 points lower than the score of the previous game. Next to release was a of course Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This fourth game in the series featured improved graphics and a more action focused gameplay style compared to the previous games. Unlike those before it, Goblet of Fire was divided into specific levels linked to the Triwizard Tournament and other events from the films. Unfortunately, they removed the ability to roam around Hogwarts freely, even removing the ability to control the camera angle, which was quite disappointing. We did get the addition of multiplayer on certain consoles, where friends could play as part of the trio. The game received mixed reviews, with some praising it for the gameplay and spells, but others criticising it for being too short. It received a score of 66. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was next in the queue. The franchise stepped away from the linear action-orientated gameplay to a more sandbox 
sandbox adventure style letting you explore Hogwarts freely instead of just rambling from mission to mission. There was no longer the option to play as the trio, but they did put a bigger emphasis on using a wider variety of spells and let you play as Dumbledore in his battle against Voldemort at the Ministry of Magic. It also released for the Nintendo Wii, which allowed players to use the Wii remote as a wand to cast spells, which was quite the selling point back in 2007. They even went as far as getting characters from the film to visit the studio to get the faces rendered into the game to improve the graphics. It only got a score of 63, which was the worst for the series at the time, but fans really did appreciate the recreation of Hogwarts. Let's move on to 2009 with Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. After shifting away from the action orientated gameplay, the franchise came back to it, but still had the free roam experience along with multiplayer, Quidditch and Wizard Jewels. Potions also became a more prominent part of this game, just like they were in the film. While the school grounds are nearly identical to the previous, some new areas were added, including the entrance to Hogwarts. Being able to use Ginny as a playable character for the first time was a really nice touch, along with many of the actors recording exclusive audio for their in-game characters. The Half-Blood Prince only received one point higher than its predecessor at 64. The Lego formula was already well established within the gaming scene by 2010, and was a perfect fit for the Harry Potter franchise. This saw the release of two LEGO games, split into years 1 to 4 and 5 through 7. Since the games have a huge focus on exploring, collecting and puzzle solving, it's no surprise it became a huge hit with fans. The games were also packed with endless content and unlockables, with over 167 characters to discover. Another highlight was that it was playable with friends through split screen mode, which would slightly alter the story if played this way. It should come as no surprise this game got a really high score of 80, surpassing all the previous games in the franchise. Within the same year we saw the release of part 1 of The Deathly Hallows. This game is based on the story of Harry, Ron and Hermione as they set out to destroy the Seven Horcruxes, which meant Hogwarts wasn't even featured. It's significantly different from the previous ones in the series, as it was targeted at an adult audience and focused more on a third person shooter resembling Call of Duty Zombies more than the Wizarding World. It received very negative reviews with scores of 37 on Metacritic which is the lowest score of all the Harry Potter games. Part 2 of The Deathly Hallows came just a year later in 2011. The story continues to follow the trio on their quest to defeat Voldemort. It had almost the same gameplay except for some minor changes like the ability to apparate which lets you teleport in and out of battles. Part 2 only scored slightly better than Part 1 at 43 three points. And finally, after over 10 years of waiting and many cries for a new Wizarding World game, fans are finally being rewarded with the new open world action RPG, Hogwarts Legacy. 